Well, good morning and welcome back to my studio. Um, we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday, except I've done a little bit in here in resolving the sun. I actually tried to record that um, so that you could actually see how I do it, but the shooting off the iPhone, it just can't pick up enough detail in here. This whole area is just white, so that was kind of a wash. Um, but stick around and I'll show you how I mix my, skull, my sky colors and how we paint the sky gradating down towards the light of the sun. Okay, I'm ready to start uh, painting the sky. Let me just adjust the camera here. But before I do that, I thought I would just show you my palette. Uh, and just get it so there's not too much reflection. There we go there. So you can see these colors are all very, very light, um, but they go from the blue, sort of a dull blue being the darkest, and then going around to a bright, brighter, more intense kind of a turquoisey blue, then into a green and then into a, a yellowish green and a yellow, and then around the other side on the orange and then into the magenta. But as we get closer to that pure yellowish tint, the colors get lighter. And as we move towards the blue, they get darker. And it's, uh, it's worth some time at this point of the painting process to mix those colors correctly so that they are in the right um, kind of value in terms of how dark they are. Uh, so that when it's time to start painting, that will go much, much faster. Um, and basically what we're going to have is there's going to be pathways of color coming down towards here with more blues and purples um, and various shades of blue out here and moving closer to the sun we're going to be more in the yellows and the oranges and if I do that effectively then that is what can fit conveys um, that effect of the sunlight. So I'm going to actually change the camera angle stand up because I can't paint this area sitting down. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna start up in this corner here uh, and with that deepest, darkest blue that I've mixed. Now sometimes when I put the color down, I realize it's too light or too dark and then I end up going in and remixing all my colors. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen here. I'm fairly happy with how these colors are and it always looks a little different when you put it on the canvas. So if it does look too dark, too light, too intense, um, don't be lazy and say, oh, I just spent all that time mixing. I don't want to go back in and adjust them uh, because you'll regret it later. So again, if, if you're not happy with how those colors look when you put them on, at kind of the first blush, it's worth taking the time and going in and assessing, or sorry, remixing them. Now one of the other things that's also at this stage also very tricky is which brush to use. And it's not even something as simple as saying, oh, I like a, like what is this, a number two Curry Filbert. Um, because it's like, what stage is that brush at? Because this brush is different at a brand new, never been used before, compared to if, if it's been painted for three hours, five hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. Um, I actually find often I like these brushes when I've painted with them a little bit because the bristles are slightly worn down. Um, and when they're brand new, sometimes they have the splayed edges um, that, that do not really go well with trying to paint inside these shapes, uh, the negative shapes of the sky holes. And so I'm actually reasonably happy with this, this brush, but there will be times literally where in that first 10 minutes of, of painting the sky, I go through five or six different brushes trying to find one that's just got that right, right amount of kind of snap in it that will hold an edge um, but that is not too sharp. Uh, and so they say it's a poor, is it's a poor carpenter that blames his tools, but by the same token, it's much better if you use the right 
tool for the right job. Um, and when it comes to a number two Curry's filbert, I probably have 40 different uh, Curry's filberts here, number two, at various stages of being worn down. Um, and in any given painting, one of those will be better for that job than the others. So it is, it is worthwhile getting to know your brushes and paying attention to, to know how you like them to do certain things. And it's a very different type of brush I want to do the foliage shapes. I actually, as I said, I was, uh, I actually recorded me painting the sun. But unfortunately, well, first of all, the light's pretty bad today, but all that it picked up in here was just like a big white area so that you couldn't really see what I was talking about. But I got talking about some other things that I thought I would do. Rather than just have me paint and talk about what I'm painting, I'd actually like to talk about some things about art in general. And one of them, and I know you've probably heard this before from me, is that whole idea of art and talent, you know, being, it's not something you're given or born with, um, it's something you acquire. And I think we're extremely fortunate, those of us who pursue painting, um, because it's not limited at all by any sort of genetic gifts. That I mean, anything you get from, in your genes from your parents, that's a gift. You didn't do anything to achieve that. You know, and in many um, things that you might want to pursue, it's very important. If you, you know, you want to be a professional football player or a professional hockey player, then how big you are is ultimately going to be a limiting factor. And there's nothing you can do about that. Um, but, in, and that's the same for many things. Or, one of the big things is time. It's like, at, at what stage in your life did you have the opportunity to really pursue something? So again, if you're trying to pursue a hockey career, you know, if, if you aren't playing junior B by the time you're 15 or 16, uh, and you're not either playing junior A or getting a scholarship to an NCAA school by the time you finish high school, it's almost impossible um, for you to create a professional career as a hockey player. Now it's been done before, but again, it's very, very rare and if you're in your 30s and uh, put on a pair of skates for the first time there's absolutely no way you're ever going to be um, good enough to become a professional but with painting there's no such limitation um, I got serious about my painting again when I was 39 years well probably 35 years old and then at 39 left the police force um, and I've gone on to have a very successful career um, and so regardless of what age you are at now and what you've achieved so far, you're only limited by how much time you have left. So that is one thing. I have to see Gary Vaynerchuk, they said, ask him what he, what he needs to do to achieve his lifelong dream of buying the New York Jets. And his answer is just stay alive long enough. Um, and I think that's also true of art like in terms of if you want to become great, become a great painter and create an incredibly successful career. Um, it's absolutely doable. It's absolutely only limited by how hard you're willing to work and how much time you have. So if you, uh, you know, if you're 95 years old and looking to start painting, I would still say go for it. Is it likely you're going to have a very successful career and be able in a few short years to achieve a lot? The answer is no. Um, but if you're 50 years old or even 60 years old, um, you know, you could still have another 20 or 30 years of painting. I've only been painting full time for 18 uh, and I've actually been very successful for about the last 13. There was about five, five years of struggle as I was trying to find my voice. But once, once that happened and I found my voice, then, um, Success came fairly rapidly, and then over the last 13, 14 years, it's just been continually working to build on that success in terms of building the, uh, the exposure of my work, the, you know, how many places my work is seen at, um, and 
particularly lately, the whole social media, the publishing, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'm very fortunate that painting is the thing that I was most passionate about um, because it's never too late to pick it up and you're not limited at all by any sort of uh, genetic things. And it also doesn't matter, like education doesn't matter. I mean, ideally, if, if you have the opportunity to get a really good uh, education in the basics, uh, and by that though, I don't mean an education where you learn a lot about art uh, and you learn about the different isms and things like that. I mean an education where you actually get to do, so where you're getting life drawing um, and you're getting hands-on instruction and actually creating paintings, actually learning to draw, that kind of stuff. Um, knowing a lot about art is like knowing a lot about push-ups. It's not going to get you in good shape. The only thing that gets you in good shapes is doing the actual exercises. And it's the same thing with art. The only thing that gets you good is the doing. And I have to say too, I've never once in my career been asked by anybody where I went to university or asked if I have a degree in art because it doesn't matter. Um, it's only, the only thing people care about is the actual work. If the work reaches out and engages them, and you, you know, the world will be the path to you. And they don't care, not only do they not care where you went to school, they don't care if you went to school. They just care about the work. So I've switched to a slightly lighter blue now um, because, again, I just want to have a little bit of variety in the actual blues that I'm using. And this whole um, gradation also is gonna take place in a fairly kind of narrow um, area. So I don't wanna have too, too many colors in here. If this was a big four foot by five foot painting, I might have as many as 20 colors in the sky. Um, but with it being only a 24 by 24 inch painting, I want it you know, you want to, I want to simplify things a little bit. And I'm also kind of, a, I like this brush that it's, uh, it's allowing me just enough control to kind of get the paint mostly where I want it to be. Um, but it's also, it's also kind of a little bit big um, in terms of getting into some really little tight areas. But the, the thing that's good about that is it allows, you know, it makes you be um, a little more creative with terms of using the corners of the brush or the edges of the brush. Uh, and it will make this painting look a little more painterly than if I had a really tiny brush and was going in there and just like coloring in the areas. If I can do it with individual strokes rather than, yeah, as I say, getting in and almost coloring it, it will look more painterly and and it will also go faster which uh, i think those of you following me know i was thrilled with how that abstract turned out but i'm not in a real hurry to spend two weeks on the painting again that was one of the things that actually got me excited about starting this painting was the idea of, of starting a painting and finishing it you know probably two days at most and there's something to be said about, there's something to be said about getting up in the morning and working on a piece you've been working on for a while. Cause you know, you know what you're going to do that day. You don't have to get yourself kind of fired up and ready to start a new painting. So there's some things I like about that, but by the same token, after a while, you kind of get tired, of, you know, for after 14 days in a row, getting up and working on the same painting, it's nice to get up and get in get onto a piece where you know you're only going to be in here for two, maybe three days at most, and then you're going to be on to another one. So you have that, that kind of freshness and spontaneity that, uh, that comes with working on lots of paintings. And actually that when I touch on that, talking about lots of paintings, I actually heard a, so Tim Ferriss, a very famous author, he's a philosopher, 
writes a lot about productivity and entrepreneurship and just hacking various things to get more out of them. He told a story that I found uh, really intriguing and I also think it applies to painting. And so he was talking about a professor at an art college uh, where they had a ceramics class. And what he said to the students is, I will mark you in one of two ways. Uh, you can do one piece and spend the entire semester working on that piece, but then I will grade you just solely on that piece. Or you can do a number of pieces and I'm just going to grade you on the pounds. And so he set up a chart that I guess, I don't know if it was 20 pounds was guaranteed an A. Um, and so it was just strictly about the number of pieces you created. And what he found invariably was that the best pieces that were created each year came from the group of students who did it by the pound. Uh, and I, I've said that before about painting, that you get better as a painter, um, not kind of as a function of spending forever on one painting, but as a function of how many paintings you do. And so I think starting off, um, when you're starting out, that's a really good thing to consider is rather than spending forever and ever and ever on one piece, um, do less ambitious projects, uh, but where you get in and get out uh, very quickly and then you're on to the next painting. And if you've been following along with Brooke, the young artist that I'm mentoring, you'll see that in action with her. I don't know how many paintings she's done uh, in the last uh, year, but it's an incredible amount. And she's, she's done an incredible amount of different stylistic approaches as well. Uh, the current pieces she's doing based on food, um, again, I, I'm just, I'm really excited about them. So is she and the response she's getting to them is really overwhelming. Um, and the other thing that's good about when you do a lot of paintings is none of them ever feel too precious. Because if you've been spending, you know, three months on a painting, I can guarantee you, you're going to start to feel that piece is a little precious. And so what does that mean? It means you're not going to take any chances. You're going to play it safe the whole way through with the painting. Uh, and playing it safe, while it might result in a half-decent painting, um, playing it safe pretty much never results in breakthroughs. Uh, so if you're doing lots of paintings, you feel much more comfortable taking chances with any one painting. And so I would really recommend that. Okay, so that's it for, well, not totally for the blues, but if, if you want to have a gradation that comes from here down to here, rather than trying to do the entire gradation down this way, what's an effective way to do it is, is do a partial gradation this way and then start the gradation going the other way and they can meet in the middle. So I'm now going to get into some of these yellows and oranges and the way the gradation happens here is the, these pathways are wider here and then tapering to narrower. And the brighter things are going to be wider here, tapering to narrower when they meet. And that will, that will cause an overall subtle gradation from the blues to the magentas to the oranges to the kind of warm greens. And then once I've got it, you know, kind of halfway resolved going both ways, then I can just get in and fill in the colors um, to kind of soften out that, uh, those transitions. to painting in the quiet because usually I have music going. And I know Cameron's, what time we at here? Well, 17 minutes, so that's, that's actually almost time for me to at least wrap this up and then maybe we'll come back when this guy's done. Because Cameron's told me he's got to make his lunch and uh, those of you that have seen the white seat realize he's a big boy and he likes to work out and uh, his diet is really important so he's making his, his lunches 
is a shake that has all kinds of vegetables and other stuff in it. So he just keeps plugging me but when he can turn the blender on. So I think that probably now is a good time for that. We're at 17 minutes. Um, I will turn the camera off and then I'm going to keep painting and I'll come back just when the sky is resolved and finish off today's video. Okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the sky and I think that's a good place to end it. But you can see it's just a gradual, again, that gradual gradation from the darker and the bluer to the lighter and the warmer. Um, and everything in here is going to do that. So the trees, the branches, all of that, and all of that will lead to that light effect of the glow of the sun. So I hope you have found this helpful and interesting, entertaining. Um, if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, you can share this with your friends. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm Tim Packer, and I thank you for your time.